Regeneration along the Glasgow branch of the Forth and Clyde Canal is led by the Glasgow Canal Regeneration Partnership. The partnership is guided by a sustainability charter, focused on people, planet and places. Local people are involved in proposals to create sustainable, mixed communities and transform derelict canal sideland into new destinations on this unique waterside. The history of the Forth and Clyde Canal spans more than 200 years. Originally opened in the late 1700s, the canal was the primary industrial transport artery until competition arose from the railways in the mid-19th century. Decline of traditional industries and construction of new road networks sealed the demise of the canal in the 1960s. Despite its industrial past, the canal is valued for its heritage and environmental qualities. It is a scheduled ancient monument protected by Historic Scotland and is a corridor of wildlife and landscape importance. Recognition of the potential value for leisure on the lowland canals was brought about by the Millennium Link project, which reconnected the Forth and Clyde Canal in 2001. The Millennium Link was a catalyst for canal regeneration proposals both Glasgow City Council and British Waterways own extensive areas of vacant land around the Glasgow branch of the canal. In 2004, they entered into a partnership, together with ISIS Waterside Regeneration, to combine land resources for future regeneration. The partnership is leading to the preparation of master plans for Mary Hill and Spears Locks, one of eight transformational regeneration areas in Glasgow. The Mary Hill Master Plan focuses on Mary Hill Locks, a unique flight of five canal locks. The master plan process will transform this vacant site and provide a mix of 800 new social rented and private houses with access to education, transport, leisure, retail and community uses on site or nearby. The Spears Locks Master Plan focuses on a new canal basin which links Spears Wharf and Port Dundas. The Master Plan proposes a mixed-use area which includes housing, businesses and cultural uses, capitalising on the presence of Scottish Opera's headquarters. Completed projects at Spears Locks include the construction in 2006 of the new basin linking the canal between Spears Wharf and Port Dundas, and the completion of the first phase of the Landscape Link, a major access and public realm project aimed at improving links between the canal and the city centre. Elsewhere, further community and leisure uses are emerging along the canal. The desire to encourage water sports has given rise to the idea of a white water canoe course called Urban Etive at Maryhill Locks and a paddle sports centre at Pinkston Basin near Site Hill. At Maryhill Locks, in response to local concerns for the derelict White House Bar, young people created an innovative lighting and music project and a community focus group identified potential future uses for this former canal side inn. A business plan is underway to assess its potential as a base for canal-related activities and community educational and information facility. The Council is building an £8 million wet and dry leisure centre off Maryhill Road to be completed in 2009. Next door, a community trust is leading the refurbishment of the historic Borough Halls to provide community and business facilities. The Trust has secured almost half of the £8 million grant aid required for its completion. The partnership is working with the internationally renowned local sculptor Andy Scott to design and seek funds for an iconic landmark footbridge at Stockingfield Junction to provide an alternative route to Lochburn Road Tunnel. The footbridge design incorporates a big man inspired by stained glass images of Mary Hill's industrial heritage at the Borough Halls. The Big Man Festival at the Mary Hill Locks in 2008 
arose from the success of the Illuminating Lynx Festival at Fir Hill in 2007. Local people enjoyed boat trips, canoeing, arts and crafts and entertainment whilst learning more about canal regeneration. A programme of smaller projects known as Make a Difference has inspired local confidence. This has made a visible impact on the canal area, improved access and brought it closer to local people. Support offered by local and national agencies and stakeholders is integral to regeneration. The Canal Partnership is very grateful for the support it has received to date and looks forward to delivering further regeneration of the Forth and Clyde Canal in the future.